We have a machine in the shop. This is a Toro Greens Master. It's a riding mower, triplex. Um, but this is a, this problem basically will pertain to most uh, most machines that have a Briggs and Stratton or a Coleman motor on it, or most machines that have an alternator, which is pretty much all. So the issue this was having was it would jump start, but then it wasn't uh, wasn't taking a charge. So before you go panicking and start ripping things apart and buying batteries and thinking you got to change the alternator, sometimes it's always the most minor things. So when I went to test the alternator on this, I had noticed something and this may be the problem with yours, so check this first. Now, when I went in here to check the alternator, I had already unplugged it here because I was going to do a test with my multimeter on here but then what I noticed was let me see if I can zoom in there we go see that wire right there where the tip of my finger is it's right there well that's the other wire there's two wires that go into this clip here from the alternator and one of them's missing. The other half of it is right there. It got broken off. So the alternator is not charging. It can't charge because the wire is sheared off. Now, there's not really much hanging out there to strip it. So it's going to be a little bit of a task because that wire from the stator or the alternator runs behind that starter. Let me zoom back out here, we're a little blurry. So yeah, that wire runs behind the starter. So you are gonna have to drop that starter down, fish that wire out of there. We may not have to drop it down, we're gonna dig in there and see. And then we're gonna strip it and we're gonna tie a new wire onto it and plug it in and that should fix the problem. But before you go ripping off this cover and the flywheel and everything to change the alternator, and if you are doing that, I have another video on my channel, just look it up on how to actually do the alternator. But check your wiring and make sure that the wiring back on the back of this clip Make sure both wires are there and make sure they're also seated properly and not loose. Because you can't get a charge if the wires aren't connecting or not there. So hopefully that'll help you diagnose your problem. Um, but let's see what we got to do to get that wire out so that we can get this fixed and working again. If you have an old alternator laying around the shop, that still has this clip on it, then what you can do is just snip your wires and add a new one on with the new wires. Now, first thing we're gonna do is, we are gonna take this cover off, but we're not gonna remove the flywheel or anything like that. All right, but you got your fuel pump up here. You're gonna have a bolt here, and there's going to be another bolt right underneath of there all right so take these two off first get your fuel pump up out of the way and you're going to be able to get access to that bolt under there also and then you're going to have a couple bolts around i don't know if you can see that it's kind of dark you have a bolt there looks like there's another one up here you're going to have a couple bolts around this cover here you can't really see on this side there it is there Another one down here in the middle and one down here at the bottom. You're gonna need to remove all of that and uh, pull this cover off of there. You also got this shroud here with a couple Phillips head screws in it. Gonna need to take those off. See if we can slide this cover off and access our wire there. See if we can just pull it out to restrip it. All right, so we got these two bolts off here. 
Sorry about the music in the background. I don't know if it's too loud, but it helps the day go by. So we loosen these two, and as you can see, you pull your fuel pump up, and now you can expose those two bolts underneath. They are gonna have to come out next. All right, so we got all the screws out around the case. As you can see, the case still won't want to come off. It is loose, so it is moving now. But this shroud's gonna have to come off, and you got four bolts here. Just get a Phillips head, take them off. All right, shroud's off. Now you can see this is ready to come off. You're just gonna have this hose here if you have it on your unit that goes up to the air cleaner. You can see it up there. Just want to pull that out and then carefully there you go slide that right off now I got to readjust my light here see if we can uh, get a grip on that stator wire all right it looks like we are actually not able to access the wire from this side of it so it looks like we're gonna go ahead and pull this exhaust off which would be you got a nut there and a nut there on the other side and then there's a muffler clamp here you can remove the muffler clamp and should be able to pull this exhaust off and hopefully we can get to the wire behind this starter here because I really don't want to have to go ahead and pull this flywheel off all right, we got the exhaust off, and I managed to get to the wires here that go to the alternator. Now, the one side, remember, was attached. I had to snip that off. And this is all basically to avoid having to pull the flywheel off. Now, there's not much room to get a stripper in here. Um, so we're gonna get one shot at this to try to strip these wires. And if it doesn't work, and we end up cutting this by accident, we're not gonna have any room to get any wire in there. We're gonna then have to pull this flywheel off. But what I did was I got an old alternator, an old stator, and cut the clip off of that one. So I'm gonna try to re-splice these into it so that I have a a working uh, clip there so what you got to do is you don't have enough room to get these wire snips in there so we're gonna have to take a razor blade and we're gonna have to try to score we want to go in about at least a good inch we're gonna have to try to score that I can't do it with one hand but put a slice on here and then maybe a slice on the other side. And then what I'm going to do is get these in here and grab it. And try to pry that piece off of there. So that I have a little bit of end showing. And then hopefully I can just splice these in there with a connector. And that will work. But if I end up cutting this and it don't work. We're going to have no wire left. And I'm going to have to go in there. So before you go trying to get these in there and splicing it and pulling on it you might rip the wire and have none left that's why I'm saying take a razor score the rubber on here first so that when you do grip that wire and pry that rubber off you're not pulling the whole wire or cutting the wire also all right I'm gonna have to set the phone down to do this so I managed to get these both these wires stripped um, I just have no room in here to work. I don't know how I'm even going to get these things spliced, get an adapter on there. Because then I still got to get in there to crimp it. I can't really see. Um, but the wires are there. Very hard to get in there. So, one last thing I am going to try here is take this shroud off of here, which is real simple. There is, let's see if I can get this light back here. Um, hold on. All 
Alright. There's one bolt right there holding this shroud on. Right in the back there. So you can see where my hand's going in. It's right back there. You are able to get to it. So we're going to take that bolt off. Then all you got to do is remove your spark plug here. And you have a little ground wire right here that comes unplugged. And that's it. Then this shroud should pull right out. So let me go ahead and take that uh, bolt off in the back. Alright, bolt's out. So you want to unplug this. And uh, there's spark plug wire here. Let me put this back in this grommet. Alright, spark plug wire here. Just unplug that. And you will have this little ground that's plugged in here. That's unplugged. So now we should be able to pull this out of there. Like so. All right. All right. Just like that. Now I have room to work. I have full access to this starter now, so that should give me what I need to splice that new end on the alternator. Man, that was a lot of work. Could have just took the damn flywheel off by now, but I really don't want to get into all that. So, all right, I'm going to try to get two connectors on here now that I have these wires spliced. And the idea, again, is to splice this new adapter onto there. And then we can put this sucker back together. All right, I'm going to uh, go get some connectors. We'll be back. All right, so as you can see, I got these screw connectors on there. Um, and I'll tell you why I used them. I didn't have a whole lot of room to get in here with these connectors. Because once you put them on, I still would have to get in there and try to crimp it. And these I know in the past, if you don't crimp them right, the wire ends up slipping out anyway and pulling out. And I didn't want that to happen, so... I kind of had no choice but to uh, twine those two wires together, intertwine them, and then screw them on, which gave me a nice tight seal. Now, if this were, you were doing a job for a customer or somebody, by all means, you probably don't want to do it this way and rig it up. You probably just want to go through the headache. They're going to have to pay a little extra money. Take your whole flywheel off, take your starter off run a whole new alternator in there um, but if you're a homeowner and you don't want to go through all that maybe you don't have the pullers to pull this off this is the way you're gonna to have to go now the only other concern you have here is you want to make sure you don't have any wires hanging out from underneath of these caps because remember that is your alternator there is voltage and those wires will touch the cylinder head here or the starter and they're gonna arc so make sure you got these screwed on tight and there's no wire sticking out. Now I don't really have any room to even get in there to wrap electrical tape around it. So either A, you're going to buy the, uh, the tape that you can shrink on there with heat or what I'm going to do here is these are actually going to tuck down back in there behind the starter push them down in there because um, there's not going to be any tension on these wires anyway so what I'm going to do is push them back down there behind the starter and I'll be able to plug that back in when I put it back together and uh, if it becomes a problem and that does come loose or starts arcing then we're just going to rip this off and do it right all right, well, as you can see now, it's actually better anyway. You got a nice long wire out here. You can disconnect the wire from here. Why on earth they put these alternator wires so short back there is beyond me. If you ask me, it's just for service money, make money. Make the homeowner bring it in for repairs. But now you got a nice long wire out here. It's tucked in behind the starter. I put this shield back on, and this actually helped push that wire down in there behind the starter a little bit more. So hopefully that holds up over time. 
Um, but that's the quick fix. Uh, again, if you're doing this for a customer or somebody, I don't recommend rigging it up. Just do it right. And uh, that's it. We're going to put it back together. Just play the video back in reverse if you need to know how to put it back together. And uh, that is how you quick fix an alternator wire that happens to be sheared on your Vanguard motor. All right. Hope this helped. See you next time.